Is Madam Web really as bad as people say it is? Hello, welcome back to a very special edition of A Quick Look. I'm Zoe Jewell, and today I will be reviewing Madam Web. <sighs> so much to say, so little time. But before we get into my thoughts, feelings, concerns about this film, I think it's important to preface and say that I am not a Marvel super fan. I like Marvel movies. I've seen the Spider-Man Marvel films. I've seen, I think, the first Venom, Sony's Venom. But I am not, I did not go into this film knowing any of the lore about Madam Web. I don't read comic books. So I wasn't thinking to myself, oh, are they going to stay true to the character in this respect? Are they going to reference this thing? I truly went into it with basically, I didn't know anything. And the question that I asked myself after the film was done was, is this a good movie? And the answer is no. <laughs> but did I have a bad time watching the movie? The answer is also no. So we'll get into it. I'll share all my thoughts. In order to kind of coherently share my thoughts, I sort of broke them down into different parts. So we'll kind of go through each aspect of it. I'm sure we'll go on many tangents. I will, it's hard to honestly, if you saw, if, if you've seen Madam Web, you, you understand. It's hard to sort of coherently articulate one's thoughts about this film because the movie itself is not coherent and doesn't articulate itself very well. So we'll do our best here. But before we get into everything I have to say, I do just want to quickly share the general sort of log line of this film. Um, because I think it might be, I don't know. I, I think it's important to kind of see what the, what, what is this film? What's this, what's the three sentence summary of this film? And do they actually um, make good on what they say the film is supposed to be about? So this is what the internet says about Madden Webb. Cassandra Webb is a New York City paramedic who starts to show signs of clairvoyance. Forced to confront revelations about her past, she must protect three young women from a mysterious adversary who wants them dead. Okay, interesting enough. Obviously, the film stars Dakota Johnson as Cassandra Webb, Madam Webb. We'll get into Dakota Johnson, all the other people involved in this film in due time. Okay. First thing is first, the number one thing that I did not like about this movie. Oh, and I should also say, spoilers ahead. If you haven't watched Madam Web, don't watch this. Go watch the film, then come back. Or if you don't care to be spoiled, then go right ahead. But we're going to be talking about the film. I'm going to be revealing spoilers. So proceed with caution. Okay. The number one thing I didn't like, or that I thought was the biggest knock against the film, was the writing. The writing was absolutely terrible. And if you've seen this film, you know what I'm talking about. The number of lines where I sat there in the theater and thought, what? Too many to count. It was honestly kind of jarring how terrible the writing was. So much so that I didn't even have enough time. Like, I thought to myself, okay, maybe one or two terrible lines will stand out and I'll remember them. But the truth is that there were so many bad lines that I, they all just kind of run together because they were all kind of terrible. I mean, so much exposition, clearly so much reshoots, filling in gaps, piecing things together. It was just really, really bad. And I'm not like breaking any new ground by saying that writing is arguably the most important part of a good movie. That if, if you want a film to succeed, the writing has to be good. And right off the bat, bad, bad writing. I did find it funny though. So if you've, if you've kept up to date with any of the like, I don't know, online discourse about this film, there was a lot made when the trailer came out for this film about this one specific line in the trailer that made people honestly scratch their heads and be like, what? And the line was, he was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. 
And people thought that line was very weird to have in a trailer because it sort of tells you everything you need to know about the movie. Like it kind of gives the whole movie away. It's weird. It doesn't really make sense. That line is not in the movie. That line is not in the movie. So either they wanted her to say that line solely for the trailer so that people could understand what the film is about, or once everyone started to like clown them for that line, they took it out of the movie. Either way, I was kind of disappointed to not have the line in the, in the film. I was waiting for it and we never got it. But yeah, writing was terrible. Just, I, I can't even honestly, like I, I, I cringe multiple times in, in, in the theater. I like kind of winced because the lines were just so terrible. Speaking of bad lines and characters that had to say terrible lines over and over and over again, the villain in this story, in this film, was also terrible. And in my opinion, as a casual viewer of superhero films, I really believe the most important, well, maybe top three, one of the, one of the most important parts to, have a, to having a successful superhero film is your villain has to be good. Your villain has to be believable. You have to understand who the villain is, what their cause is, what they're trying to achieve. If you don't, then the movie falls apart because then it just becomes silly and it becomes cheesy. And that's exactly what happened in Madame Web. The villain, whose name is Ezekiel, basically the gist is, again, if you've seen the movie, you know this, Cassandra's mom... We see at the beginning of the film, they flash back to, by the way, the film takes place in 2003. The film flashes back to 1973, so 30 years before, obviously, present day, or present day in the film. And Cassandra's mom is in Peru. She's trying to find this spider that has this, like, you know, special healing powers. This man is accompanying her on this journey. His name is Ezekiel. You think he's, you know, just a nice guy helping her out. Turns out he wants the spider for himself. He steals it from her, he tries to kill her, and he runs away with it. Um, and he basically <clears throat> takes on these powers from this spider, and uh, he starts to have these visions of himself being killed in the future by these three young women. And so he, he decides to find these women before the future happens and kill them first. Okay, that's sort of the gist of the film. I don't even know where to begin. First of all, almost every single line I think was ADR. It was dubbed. You could tell. Every line, basically. Very few shots were of his actual face, so you couldn't see his lips moving. The way that he was reading the lines were, were just terrible. He had really no backstory. You didn't really understand what his purpose was. Yes, you could understand, okay, he doesn't want to die, from these three teenagers, but you don't understand his motives for wanting the spider. It's just, there was just nothing there. And also why was he always without shoes? He never was wearing shoes. And I understand it's because he goes into his spider suit thing, but couldn't he still have been wearing shoes? I thought, I thought that was so bizarre. Like he's walking on a New York city train without shoes. I know that's probably not the thing that should stand out to me from this film, but that was disgusting. And what's baffling for me too is the actor who plays this character, Tahir Rahim, is a good actor. Like he's been in good movies. He's done good work. He's not a bad actor, but this movie made him seem like the worst actor on the planet. And that's what bad writing does. It makes people seem like absolutely terrible actors. I just, I couldn't get over how truly awful this villain character was the, and 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 for for me honestly like the two biggest downfalls was the writing and the villain and they were both terrible absolutely terrible speaking of terrible the cgi was really bad and i don't know if they were th the film is set in 2003 so i don't know if they were trying to make it seem like we were back in 2003 with the level and quality of cgi and special effects but that's what it felt like because they, they were bad. I, I'm no CGI expert. I'm no like visual effects expert, but I can see when things are good and things are bad. And this movie, 
bad CGI all around, just not good. Another question I had going into it before I even saw it was, will Dakota Johnson be able to lead this film? Because I have a very, I don't want to say love hate relationship with Dakota Johnson, but I, I don't always think she's, I think there's some projects where she's a good actor and then some where I feel like she's not. She's very much someone in my opinion who you don't really know what you're going to get when it comes to her. Now I love her as a person because her press tour right now is a plus. It's amazing. She's very funny. She's very dry. She's got a great sen sense of humor, sarcastic, all that stuff, but she wasn't right for this part. She just wasn't right for this part. And I think Dakota Johnson is a very specific kind of actor and the writing, the story has to be right in order for her to succeed. And she's not, I feel like there's actors in Hollywood who, even if the writing is bad, the directing is bad, the film itself is bad, they can elevate the film even just a little bit because they're so good. And Dakota Johnson doesn't have that ability. Like she's, she is not somebody who's going to be able to like improve a movie if everything else in it is bad. She kind of is somebody who, in order for her to be good, everything else has to be good around her. That's my opinion of Dakota Johnson. Now, again, I like her. I think that the parts of the movie where she was just able to be like Cassandra, paramedic girl, I thought were fine. She was fine in those parts. Honestly, she was very good in the baby shower scene. Like that's that to me was like the best use of Dakota Johnson as an actor. But her as this superhero action star, that didn't work for me, unfortunately. And I like Dakota Johnson and I want to see her succeed, but I don't think the superhero world is the right world for her. Okay, speaking of other actors in the film, so Sydney Sweeney is in this movie as Julia, a teenager, one of the teenagers who Dakota Johnson's character finds and sort of like takes care of. Um, she's also one of the teenagers who Ezekiel visions or sees kill him in the future. So the idea is she, or we're supposed to believe that she and the other two girls are going to grow up to become these sort of spider girl type characters, superhero types. We need to stop making Sydney Sweeney play nerdy, shy characters. We have to stop. We just have to. Seeing Sydney Sweeney as like this bookish nerd with her, her, um, you know, like holding her books and wearing her backpack and having these like wide rim glasses on it. It's like, I feel like this happened in the nineties, early two thousands when like for a, for a boy to play a nerd or, or even a girl to play a nerd, they like would take a beautiful, stunning girl and just put them in glasses. And they're like, there you have it. She's a nerd. That's what they were doing with this character. She is one of the most like beautiful, stunning, like she, it's just, it's just not believable. It's not believable. And I feel like this has happened to Sydney Sweeney like a number of times in her career where she is supposed to play this, like this character that just is so clearly not who she is. And as I said, it's, it's not believable. It doesn't, it doesn't work. Um, and Sydney, much like Dakota, I feel like she's a very specific kind of actor. And I think some things she's been in, she's been great. Other things she hasn't been as good. I don't, for me, the jury is still out as to whether or not she's a good actor, which may be controversial. I don't know. She was fine in this movie, but again, like the character just, I kept rolling my eyes because I just was like, this is not, this is not who Sydney Sweeney should, should be playing in a movie. Sorry. Um, this wasn't like super offensive to me, but I felt like it was kind of annoying, which was Pepsi clearly paid a lot of money to be featured predominantly in this film because not only did the final fight scene incorporate the giant Pepsi sign in New York City, but in the baby shower scene that I mentioned before, Dakota Johnson is holding for a good five minutes a Pepsi can. And listen, we know, I know, Lots of brands will pay money to be featured in films and it happens all the time, car, cars and everything. But this just felt very obvious. It felt, honestly, it was just too much. And it, 
if it was a good movie with good writing and, and good acting and everything else and the Pepsi thing was in there, I probably could write it off. But the fact that we had bad writing, bad acting, bad CGI, and then the Pepsi in our face 24-7, I was just like another thing to just knock on this movie. And then the ending. Like, the ending was bad. There were no real superhero scenes in this film. And that to me was a big miss. The only time we ever saw the three girls in their suits fighting was in Ezekiel's vision of what was going to happen in the future, which maybe was like a minute long altogether. We never really got any of it. And that to me was a big miss. Why, why have a superhero film when you don't really show anybody being a superhero. Like, I know we kind of got it with Cassandra at the end, sort of, but that to me just seemed like a huge miss. I didn't understand that. And then Cassandra ends up being blind, which I think is, I think that's part of like the character in the comics. So I think it's true to the character, but the fact that she just like wakes up and she's, and she's blind and she just seems perfectly content with the fact that she's blind. It just was very honestly laughable. I, I, I laughed in my chair. I just, I don't really know what else there is to say about it other than it was, it was very, very cringy. Um, and then this is the biggest spoiler of all, I suppose. I don't know. There was the um, incorporation of the Parker family in this film. So Cassandra's sort of paramedic partner is Ben Parker, Peter Parker's uncle. Um, we get to see Peter's mother, played by Emma Roberts, who I did not know was going to be in this film and was kind of shocked to see her, honestly. And while there was a part of me because I like Spider-Man and I like Peter and those characters, felt like, oh, that's kind of fun. But also there was no point in them being in this film. Ben really had no point other than just being there for Cassandra. Um, Peter's mother certainly had really no point in being there other than it just being complete fan service. But it was fan service that didn't really work. So I don't know. I, again, it didn't like totally bother me, but it just felt, it just felt weird. It just didn't really fit in. It, it wasn't really useful to the overall storyline. And so therefore I just felt like it was pointless, frankly. Now, I don't want to completely trash this film, even though I've spent a good 15 minutes trashing this film. I wanted to just quickly say some things I did like about the film. As I mentioned before, set in 2003. So we got a lot of references to, to, to 2003. Toxic, Britney Spears' song, plays a big sort of part in the film. At, at one point, I enjoyed that. Um, we also see a big billboard sort of like sign of Beyonce's Dangerously In Love album cover, which came out in 2003. That was kind of a fun little nod. Um, and then honestly, the best part was Dakota Johnson, which it wasn't the best. It was like dumb, but it made me laugh, was after she uh, falls into the water and has to be re revived. It's, I can't even get into that. Um, she says, I just want to go home and watch Idol. Which, you know, to 2003, who among us was not going home to watch American Idol? Relatable, honestly. Um, and I did love Dakota Johnson's hair and her outfit. Like, I loved that red jacket that she was wearing. And that's when you know the, the, the film is bad. It's when I am complimenting the wardrobe. And that's the only thing I'm really complimenting. But like I said, I didn't hate my time. Like, I didn't, I didn't feel like I was completely wasting an evening watching the, this film. I sort of kind of had fun at some points, mostly because I was just laughing throughout a lot of it. Would I recommend it? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, but it was, I'm kind of glad I saw it because it was that bad that it was kind of worth seeing. I don't know if that makes sense. But that's really how I felt. So that is my non-Marvel super fan review of Madam Web. If you've seen this film, please let me know what you thought. Please share your thoughts, feelings, opinions in the comments. Do you agree with me? Disagree with me? I want to know everything because I feel like I experienced something that is kind of like 
once in a decade, a, a, a big budget superhero film being as bad as it was. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.